epic stat one speedruns of statistics, Brian Stevens versus chapter three categorical variables. Begin. An important note to take is that bar charts and pie charts both display univariate categorical data. And you can remember this, that we can make a pie chart of our favorite bars and a bar chart of your favorite pies. Just think bar, pies, pies, bar. Bar chart of your favorite pies, pie chart of your favorite bars, because you have to ask someone, what is your favorite pie? What is your favorite bar? And these would be categorical questions. You might also notice right here that in the pie chart, we have a relative frequency, which is out of 100%. Or in the bar graph, we have here a count or a frequency, making this a frequency bar graph. Now there is a special case bar graph that would be a Pareto plot. And the good way to remember the Pareto plot is put them in order, the P for Pareto, put them in order. So it's just a bar chart that's been put in order from the most common to the least common. It has additional features like this cumulative line here showing you the percentage is increasing in either the percent or the count but this is mostly just a Pareto plot that puts them in order as a special case bar chart. So very important that we know right now that univariate categorical displays of data would include pie charts, bar charts, Pareto plots, and we do have one more that we don't use quite as often, and that would be ring charts. Ring charts are basically like a pie chart where we've taken out the center. So these are your univariate categorical displays of data. Next, we have a relative frequency table and a frequency table. And all this shows you is either the counts in the frequency table, just like we saw in our graphics above, or it shows you the percentage out of 100. Think relative, relative to 100. So we have here the relative percentage of people who chose a certain pie or the frequency, which is the count of how many observations there are for each bar someone chose. Now, an important thing to note right here is these are also univariate displays of categorical data. You might notice the numbers right here, but the question was, what is your favorite bar? So these are the counts of the individuals of people who said Barcade, Cool Beans, and Half Barrel, some bars from Knoxville. So with these right here, we still have a categorical display of data with a frequency table or a relative frequency table. If you wanna calculate the relative frequency, you would just count up how many observations there are, and we could change this here to 60%, and this would be 30%, and this one right here would be 10%. There were 10 observations, so all we're doing for these calculations are 60 divided by 10, three divided by 10, and one divided by 10 to give the relative frequencies. So it's out of the total. How many out of the total were there in this category? Next, we're gonna go to a bivariate display here of data with a contingency table. Now a contingency table is bivariate categorical. Take a note right here that this is by varied categorical. We have people on the Titanic and whether they survived and what class they were in. So if we want to look at a certain group right here, we could look at what is called a cell. This cell represents the bivariate combination, meaning two variable combination. These are people who were alive and in the crew and there was 12, 212 of them. Next, we can look at calculating the marginal distribution. Now what's pretty interesting about the marginal distribution is it's the distribution in the margin. So there's two of them. There's the marginal distribution for who survived and there's the marginal distribution for who unfortunately was in first, second, third class or crew. And of course that's kind of linked, we'll see in a moment here, to who survived. So when you think about this, the marginal distributions are kind of like your frequency tables. Take a look back here. It looks kind of like this right here because we're only focusing in on one variable. Now it is in a bivariate display, but it's just the distribution in the margin. So what do we see here? The bivariate table has two marginal displays, one marginal display for one variable and one marginal display for another variable. But when we go to the conditional distribution, it's important we know how to phrase this. We're gonna ask a question here like, given somebody was in first class, and what we will do is we forget about everything else. Let's forget about everything else and focus in on only the people who are in first class. And there's so many ways to phrase this. For the people who are in first class, only the people who are in first class. Given someone was in first class, what is the probability they survived? And we'd have here 203 people out of the 325, 
and that is the conditional distribution given someone was in first class. So if you notice, it sets a condition for one variable, given someone was in first class, or for all the first class uh, people on the Titanic, what percent of them survived? You can do other conditional distributions by just choosing another thing to set a condition for. Given someone was alive, or for all the people who were alive, many ways to phrase this question, what's the probability they were in first class? Notice how I'm only focusing in on this data right here. Given somebody was alive, what's the probability they were in first class? And we'll shrink down the calculator here a little bit. So given somebody was alive, what was the probability they were in first class? And this would be 203 divided by 711. So given somebody was alive, what is the probability they were in first class? And it would be 203 divided by 711 because we're only focusing on given someone is alive for all the people who are alive, only the people who are alive. So the conditional distribution sets a condition and looks within it. You can set any condition given someone is in third class, and then you could look at just this distribution. What's the probability they were alive? Next, we have here segmented bar charts and mosaic plots. Now, I'm not a big fan of segmented bar charts, but let's do an example right here. Let's see if you'd rather have test A or test B. So one of my favorite examples right here is to show two different mosaic plots. And we'll also draw these as segmented bar charts here in a moment. So we've got here whether people pass or fail a test. And let's go right here and let's draw this one. And let's draw this one. These are two separate mosaic plots. And let's think about what it's showing us. We have here test A, test B, whether people pass the test or fail the test, whether people took test A or test B, and whether people pass the test or whether people failed the test. So with these two mosaic plots, what do you notice? We have here the relationship between two categorical variables. The two categorical variables represent if someone took test A or test B, and whether they passed or failed the test. In this one right here, given someone took test A, about 80% of them failed and 20% of them passed. It's just the height of the bar. Given someone took test B, about 80% of them failed and 20% of them passed. But over here, you'll notice that there's a difference, that given someone took test A, about 80% failed, but given someone took test B, maybe about 15%. And the height of the bar represents a scale going from zero to 100. And so you would say in the kind of blue ocean distribution over there, it's more likely someone would pass given they took test B. And so what does a mosaic plot do? It shows us the bivariate relationship. It's actually connected to the contingency table. Contingency tables and mosaic plots are probably our two best ways to display bivariate categorical data. Now, the reason I'm not a big fan of segmented bar charts is because it's basically the same thing, but does not give additional information. So that distribution I just drew over there with the ocean pen, we're gonna draw it right here, but as a segmented bar chart, it kind of looked something like this. Segmented or stacked bar charts look like this, where we just stack the bar charts on top of each other and they don't show you the marginal distributions. In this one, you can't tell if more people took test A or test B. You can only see the pass-fail rate, and it's just basically two bar charts next to each other stacked on top. But if you look back here at this distribution, you can see along the bottom right here the marginal distribution of who took test A and test B. You can see that more people, due to the width of the bar on the bottom, took test B. This width of the bar on the bottom right here represents more people taking test B and fewer people taking test A. In the segmented bar chart, we don't get that information. It's very similar to a mosaic plot, but does not contain the information a mosaic plot does. So segmented bar charts and mosaic plots display bivariate categorical data along with the contingency table, which shows the numbers inside of it. Last but not least, we want to see if something is independent or dependent. Now just imagine you go to your teacher and you've seen these distributions right here. Now over here on the side, we have the marginal distribution of pass fail. And this one right here, it's like 20% of the class passed and 80% of the class failed. Not that fun to take those versions of the tests right there. But in this distribution, given someone took test A, which is a 
conditional distribution. About 20% of them passed and 80% of them failed. Given someone took test B, about 90% uh, of them passed and 10% of them failed. This is the overall marginal distribution of pass fail. And this is the overall test distribution of AB. Now, when you think about your grade passing or failing is dependent on your test, which of these looks like your grade would be dependent on which test you took? And due to this large gap right here, the, the gaps in the conditional, I mean, excuse me, yep, the conditional distributions, the gaps in the conditional, that is evidence that there's an association where the two variables are dependent. So the closer it is over here, and it doesn't have to be perfect, it could be a little off, but the closer it is, the more independent they are. Because over here, it wouldn't matter if you took A or B, your passing or failing would be independent of taking test A or B. And over here, you can see due to the differences in the conditional distribution that taking test A or test B, your grade would depend, telling you there's an association. You know, Cheese has been doing those Mario speed runs, getting some high scores, but you know what? He can't beat these stat to one speed runs. You got it. Talk to you later. Good luck, everyone.